Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna look at something that has always interested me, but I never really got to take a deeper dive into it, and that is gonna be the ancient mounds and effigies that were found all across the United States before we manifest destiny and headed west and covered all of these things up. And now when I say covered up, you can look at it in many different ways, but from the photographs I'm about to show you, it certainly appears besides, you know, settling these areas and building on top of them, we also turned a lot of these effigies and mounds and the surrounding area into quote unquote forests. And then the later generations just believed that these forests had always been there. And it also leads to the sort of chicken or egg conversation that we hear when we talk about what happened to all the trees. Um, this is sort of the same thing because we see uh, in these oldest photographs I found of these mounds and effigies, which is another thing I want to talk about. Um, they say that the original release and the noting of all of these effigies, the documentation of them in North America was done by the Smithsonian Institute. And they basically say that the Smithsonian was formed for this purpose. They say, you know, they'll give you a convoluted thing where the Smithsonian was created for all you know ancient artworks and things of importance for history but you'll really notice that the first thing and the main thing that they did for 20 30 years in the mid 1800s was hunt for these different effigies all around north america so it's already interesting and these photographs i'm going to show you these are from the quote unquote secret files of the smithsonian now these aren't necessarily secret you can contact the smithsonian and if you have the right credentials they'll let you view this sort of stuff i did not do it this way i actually used google books and i just searched through the oldest non-fiction novels looking for references to ancient mounds and effigies and i found some novels that were published in the 1800s so i'm just going to look at some of the photographs from those novels and we're just going to take a deeper dive into these ancient mounds and effigies and what they could have been used for and how they were kind of covered up or pushed to the side now one of the first things i want to point out here is how flat the land is that these effigies are built on I don't know if this is a matter of coincidence. I would like to think that all of the effigies that were found, all of these mounds that were found were pointed out and were documented, but it does appear that in certain areas, these mounds were being built over or they were having trees planted on them almost in an uh, attempt to try and cover them up um, or to keep them private, you know. It was a different time back then. We don't know if they were trying to hide them for a nefarious reason or not. We can only kind of wonder if that's what they were doing. But you'll notice a lot of these mounds appear to have freshly planted trees on top of them while the surrounding areas are completely clear, which just leads to a question. How was that done? Why was that done? Did the people who found these mounds decide to clear everything off besides uh, the trees? Uh, that are pretty small that were planted on top of these mounds, you know, pretty fresh. I would say none of these trees look more than 15, maybe 20 years old. So you'd have to ask how old are these mounds? Who built them? And uh, that's a question that we still kind of uh, discuss today. Modern sources will say that we've kind of figured it out and these were the natives that built these. But these photographs sort of lend to a different idea not that it couldn't have been the native americans but just a, a question of what exactly was going on within this one appears to have some sort of hatch on the top that looks open i had to really zoom in to look at this and i'm sorry it couldn't be a little clearer but just these effigies in general we're told that they were basically empty on the inside and that's the current narrative we're told. Now, in some of the older novels, nonfiction that I read from the 1800s, it says that these were clearly built to be living quarters and the entire uh, underground was basically a complex or a larger structure that housed smaller structures within it. And you won't really see that talked about today. You'll really only see the mounds, the singular mounds referenced, but the overall larger structures and some of these they say were up to a mile in diameter so we're talking about basically um, the equivalent to what a star fort would be 
because we have to imagine that these are all built with rock underground and these rocks are said to be you know layered down there and what i found interesting is they say the further south you go as far as these effigies and mounds are concerned uh they start to be built with red brick and they say there's red brick underground and basically they laid out these entire huge areas living areas star forts whatever you want to call them and then over top of them they put dirt and then on top of that dirt they planted grass and trees and other shrubbery basically so unless you really knew where to look because when these were made i don't think they had the concept that air flight would be possible and that's really how we would begin to notice these things it is funny that they say some of the first effigies and mounds were discovered by those who were traveling by a uh, balloon now this isn't the dirigible that we talk about at later times but they were using forms of um, hot air balloon the scientists at the times to try and get a view of the overall area and it's quite a concept to discuss and i'm going to get into the hang glider or the first ever hang glider as uh considered in modern terms so to speak we also have stories from the middle ages about men who basically built winged apparatuses and completed small flights but we're going to talk about the first documented hang glider basically winged man flight and they say that this machine was developed in 1893 and it was sold there was about 10 of them made and they were sold to the who's who of the world basically the richest men in the world thought that they themselves would be able to fly by attaching these wings to themselves and where were these flights attempted off of where were most of these uh experiments if you want to call them that conducted well these were conducted off of the quote-unquote ancient mounds apparently they found that these ancient mounds were the perfect height to complete these uh small glider flights you know they didn't really want to get too uh risky with it as we'll call it they weren't jumping off of huge buildings like the medieval story say about men who were jumping off of cathedrals with wings attached to them but these were actually documented flights of people going on to conical hills and basically jumping off with gliders attached to them and making flights of almost a thousand feet they say and these were all successful so i just found that to be really interesting and they really um give most of the credit to this man otto lilienthal and they say this man otto lilienthal uh, always had a sort of obsession with the idea of flight and it says that he basically took the idea from the middle ages um that were they, they were basically considered to be myth you know nowadays you can find wikipedia pages for these middle age uh, flights that took place but um but they're saying that Otto had the ability to take these middle age plans and the plan that he saw that was written down in the architecture book by Vitruvius and he took this and he created himself a hang glider or a glider which would be the first modern glider they say used in the world and what I find to be extremely interesting about this uh besides the fact that he was flying in general on a glider is they say that he actually built a conical hill or he built a ancient mound i guess it wouldn't be called ancient but he built exactly how the ancient mounds look he built one of those himself on some land that he purchased and he built this because he was tired of having to travel to the other mounds to have to make these flights and he wanted to just be able to do it on his own land now this is said to be after his death when they dedicated his conical hill to him look at this hill and mm, just tell me what you think about what you see that's all i'm gonna say about it because it certainly looks like there's more going on than just a man-made hill to jump off of So, besides the man-made hill or effigy 
that is dedicated now to Otto Lilienthal. We also have this pillar that is sitting in the middle of open land. And they're saying that this is the location where Otto had his uh, fateful accident. They say one of his gliders stalled in the middle of the air and he fell 50 feet where he broke his vertebrae. Now, I just want you to look at this pillar because Otto died a little over 100 years ago. So this pillar has to be no older than that. And is this a gratifying monument? Would this be something that makes sense to you? But I'm going to leave the video there. Just a brief one. I just wanted to share some of those interesting things with you. Let me know what you think about the photographs, uh, which are said to be some of the first photographs of the ancient mounds. And a lot of these ancient mounds might be the first time you saw them before they had men come in and really mess with them. And I'm also going to just uh, see what you guys think about Otto and his hang glider. And if you think this is something that... Uh, <laughs> history kind of forgot or do you think this could have been really one of the inventions that actually led to the flight of the airplane and things of that nature because prior to this like i discussed earlier in the video we were really focused on balloons and that led to dirigibles and the such so this is really one of the first um inventions in the direction of the airplane so i thought that was interesting and i would share that all with you